Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, what is P1155? The official description is air. Fuel ratio sensor heater circuit malfunction for bank 2. Sensor 1. That sounds like a mouthful, but let's simplify it. Your car's engine needs the perfect mix of air and fuel to run efficiently. To measure this, it uses sensors. Toyota uses a special type called an air fuel ratio sensor which is more precise than a standard oxygen sensor. Bang 2 tells us we're looking at the side of the engine that does not contain cylinder number 1 on a V6 or V8. This is usually the bank closer to the firewall. Sensor 1 means it's the sensor located before the catalytic converter, the one doing the most important work for fuel mixture control. Now, the heater circuit part is key. These sensors need to be very hot, around 1200 to 1400 degrees Fahrenheit, to work correctly. They can't wait for the exhaust to heat them up, so they have a built-in electric heater. The P1155 code means your car's computer, the ESA, has detected a problem specifically with this heater circuit for the bank to sensor one sensor. It's not necessarily the sensor itself that's bad, but the part that heats it up. What are the symptoms you might notice? First and foremost, the check engine light will be on. That's what probably brought you here. You might also experience poor fuel economy since the sensor isn't helping the ECU fine-tune the fuel mixture. In some cases, you could fail an emissions test, and while less common, a rough idle or a slight hesitation during acceleration can also occur, especially when the engine is cold. So what's causing this problem? The number one culprit, far and away, is a failed air-fuel ratio sensor. The internal heating element simply burns out over time, just like an old light bulb. It's a common wear and tear item. But before you rush out to buy a new sensor, there are a few other things to check. You could have a blown fuse for the heater circuit. Always check your fuse box first. It's the easiest and cheapest fix. Another possibility is damaged wiring or a bad connector. Wires in the engine bay are exposed to heat and vibrations. They can get frayed, melted, or corroded, especially the connector right at the sensor. Finally, although it's rare, the ECU itself could be at fault, but you should always rule out everything else before even considering this. Let's talk about the fix. First, safety. Let your car cool down completely. You'll be working with the exhaust system, which gets incredibly hot. Grab your owner's manual or look online to locate bank 2, sensor 1. It will be screwed into the exhaust manifold on the bank of cylinders opposite cylinder 1. Once you find it, inspect the wiring and connector. Look for any obvious signs of damage, like melted plastic, green corrosion, or broken wires. If it all looks good, the next step is to test the heater circuit itself. You'll need a multimeter for this. Unplug the sensor. You'll see four pins on the sensor's connector. Two are for the sensor signal, and two are for the heater. Usually, the two heater wires are the same color. Set your multimeter to measure resistance. Place your probes on the two heater pins on the sensor side. A good heater should have low resistance, typically somewhere between about 0.8 and 5 ohms, depending on the specific sensor model. If you get an open circuit or OL reading, that means the heater element is broken, and you definitely need a new sensor. If the resistance is good, you will L want to check for power and ground at the vehicle S harness connector with the key on. If you've confirmed the sensor's heater is bad, replacement is pretty straightforward. You'll need a special oxygen sensor socket to get the proper grip and leverage. Spray some penetrating oil on the old sensor S threads and let it soak in to make removal easier. Once the old one is out, screw the new one in, torque it to spec, and plug it in. I highly recommend using a high quality OEM or equivalent brand like Denso Fortway. Cheaper parts can fail quickly or not work correctly right out of the box. After replacing the sensor, Use your scan tool to clear the P1155 code. Then, take the car for a drive to make sure the check engine light stays off. And that's it. You've just diagnosed and fixed a P1155 code. I hope this video helped you understand what's going on with your Toyota. Taking the time to properly diagnose the issue can save you time and money. If you found this helpful, give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe for more car repair guides. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.